We went to some wine making competitions in California. Um, we took six wines to California. We won five silver medals and one bronze. So we've done a lot of different you know, types of wines. Um, we're going to start out with about six wines to open our winery and then as years go on expand more and more. We enjoyed going around the different wineries, you know, sample wine and we came back from the Finger Lakes one day and with about $500 worth of wine and we decided there's got to be a cheaper way to do this. So we started making our own wine. What we wanted to do is kind of start slow and make a couple hundred cases of wine the first year then maybe double production the next year and then keep you know going on and doubling and doubling every year and expanding until we have you know something that one of us can retire and we're fighting over to see who gets to retire right now <laughs> right now we're selling out of our house out of the basement we modeled the, the garage and made our safety room down there and our um, our barn over here we have for the wine making and manufacturing and we have plans to add a building in the valley down here we started a vineyard in the field where you come in the driveway. Basically to figure out what grows the best around here, what's the easiest to take care of. So every row is a different variety. Pretty much like an experimental vineyard. So we've learned what's easy to grow and what's hard to grow, what the birds like, what the deer like, you know, what we like. We have 16 and a half acres, so we have a couple acres on top of the hill cleared out that we're gonna put our, you know, our main vineyard. And this is just like, to, when people come in, you know, they want to see grapes. And we have it right on the front door as soon as they walk in. These are what we use for our, our primary fermenters. What we do is um, crush the grapes. Here's the crusher of December. We put the grapes in here. It crushes the grapes and they fall off the bottom. And then the, uh, the stems come out here and fall into a garbage can. And that crushes them. Then we put them in these open fermenters where they can absorb the, uh, the color from the skins. That's what it gets them to turn red. Out of a barrel of wine, you can get 300 bottles. This is Niagara that we got from Lake Erie. Uh, we drive up there to buy our sweet wines and our, our white wines. So you can see it's cloudy because it's still fermenting. The same wine would be the one, the one on the end there. And you see it's just crystal clear. It's just all the sediment settle out over the year, over the course of a year. It makes it nice and clear. We have a basil wine that we grow basil boil it and make a tea out of it, add sugar to it, ferment that, and it makes a nice wine that a lot of our friends you know, use for cooking. This, the small tanks on top are 100 liter tanks, or 25 gallons, and the, the, small, the bottom ones are 75 gallons. Now this one's not quite completely full because it's still fermenting. And as the wine, as the yeast consumes the sugar, it creates CO2. So this isn't actually air in here, it's actually CO2 in here. So it's like an inert gas. So even though this one's not completely full, there's CO2 inside here and not air, so it's not going to go bad. We were actually approached by some of the other wineries in the area, and I'd stop in and talk to them because we like to go in different wineries and sample. And you know, they said they kind of encouraged us to open a winery. We hope you hurry up and open one because the more wineries you have in the area, that's going to attract people to your area. If there was only two wineries here in Washington, it really wouldn't attract people to come there. But if there was five wineries, someone can come here, spend the night, stay at a bed and breakfast, hit five wineries, then move on to you know another place for the, you know, for the next day. And actually, a lot of wineries in one area is actually good for business.